Yo, so I got Wayne here with me again, Mr. At Wayne Classic. Yes, sir. Um, always a, always good to have you here. Love your perspective. Love your story. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit today about influences uh, with our music in particular. So we want to make it personal. I'm gonna tell a little story about kind of what I was involved in artistically uh, growing up. Spitball with Wayne get his perspective on some things we're probably gonna leave some stuff out but that'll just give us an excuse to do another video um but i want to talk about uh our influences i you know i started um i started doing music like i started recording music probably around like 13 and i'm 34 now so i'm like pushing um 20 years in music of actually making music and i wasn't one of those guys that took breaks uh, from the moment I started recording on Sound Recorder on my Windows computer with a, it wasn't even a USB mic. It was the just red eighth inch uh, quarter ja or eighth inch jack yes, um, sir. with that little desktop mic. Uh, it was not a studio. From the moment I turned that stuff on, I did not stop. You know, I have over probably 30 or 40. 35 albums completed to date. I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. I probably have thousands of music that I've done uh, personally, collaboratively. I've made a buttload of music. Um, and so my relationship with music has been quite a journey. And I was even telling the story of kind of the early days of that uh, on my YouTube channel. So definitely go check out the video titled Early Days where I kind of talk about my upbringing. Um, but let's talk about influences. Now, I acquired things while I was in music from the age of 13 and forward. But I want to talk about before we made the music, before we started making the music, what were some of the key influences? I know for me, I think about my mom. You know, when I was in my car or, or getting driven to school, my mom would always have on talk radio. My mom would always have um, just different genres, bro. Um, she was in the club scene a lot. Um, she loved to dance. And so um, she had like just like a DJ's ear, so to speak, with music. And so she just listened to a lot of different stuff. Um she listened to hip hop. She listened to dance. She listened to trance. She listened to pop. Listened to jazz. I mean, I never forget just hearing the weirdest, seeing the weirdest CD covers uh, in my mom's car uh, of just stuff that she would play. And I remember just uh, falling in love with like just different stuff, like stuff that would make you think, stuff that would make you laugh, stuff that would make you want to dance. I was big into roller skating as a kid. So when I used to go to the roller rink, and we're not talking roller blades, get out of here with that nonsense. We're talking four wheel skates, rhythm skating, we called it back in the day. Um, and so when I went to those, it was kind of like a club because you had a DJ and they would play music all night. You used to have a sock hop where it was from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. I went to a place called Skateland in Arizona. Any yeah. of y'all who are around my age know we had it jumping at the skate rink Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and even on Sunday after church if, if, if we really wanted to, to turn up when no one was there. But they played all kind of music as well. And in the skate scene, it's about speed, it's about tempo, rhythm. They were playing stuff like Diamond Girl and just all this stuff. Don't, 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 don't. Like it almost sounded like yeah. some Mario or yeah. something. <laughs> like it was just crazy. Um, and being that it was DJ influenced, it was a lot of like 80s and 90s and even disco and mm -hmm. funk that was re-rendered. Yeah. What was that? Drop the bomb on me. Drop, you dropped the bomb. Oh, bro. <laughs> Listen to me. When I heard tracks come on and we hit that dance floor, bro, we was killing it. Yes. And so uh, my upbringing before creating music was that uh, I was all over the place. I particularly liked hip hop. I listened to hip hop radio and stuff, but I also liked um, the dance music. I loved the dance music, both from the States and from out of States. And I also really loved R&B, though that influence didn't come into my life till much later. Mm -hmm. um, so musically, that's where I was influenced. What about you? Um, how was your upbringing 
prior to actually creating the music? Yeah, so I, honestly, very similar. You, um, What you said is like, uh, I was reminiscing and I totally forgot about how influential uh, skate, yeah, skate culture, roller skate culture was on me. I think to add to it, it would be, for me, it would be obviously reggae music. My, my parents are from, um, both from Jamaica. So mm -hmm. like dad used to get tapes from back east and back, and back then, if you didn't, especially in Arizona, if you didn't get sent music, from some family because there was, it wasn't really internet like that um then right. you didn't have it <laughs> yeah, exactly so, you had to yeah. see you had a, a, a what were those things called the mixtapes and yeah no, no, well the uh you you had a um a zipped up cd bag oh yeah and then from there you might have had a house where your parents had a stereo system with like a 10 disc disc mm, changer oh, yeah, that revolved yeah. or yeah. like a two or three disc setup yeah. Uh, so it was CDs. Yeah. CDs. It wasn't like the music store was jumping. This is just stuff that your parents had. Oh yeah, and and dad had um had cassettes too. Like it was it was early, you know what I'm saying? So um yeah, I mean uh reggae music, like smooth jazz, um like you said top 40. I call that top 40. So all the like mm -hmm. top 40 from all the eras. So top 40, 70s, top 40 80s you know and what 90s. about church music yeah exactly that was a big part too um and you know what's actually really interesting um from a, a rapper perspective my my mom early on we used to listen to nursery rhymes so mm. like that was a big thing in terms of like developing memorization learning songs um just the ability to have the aptitude or capacity to like remember memorize lines i trace that back to memory uh memory or uh nursery rhymes as well as uh memorizing like bible verses memorizing the books of the bible stuff like that that's Not, facts everything was taught with a song it was all taught with the song everything was taught with the song so and i can now see how that did evolve into you know being able to write rhymes and memorize them off the top and you know have a have a whole catalog of verses that you can just pull from pretty easily because um, I've been doing it since forever, even before I called myself. Cause I, I started rapping um, around 14. I'm actually 35. Um, so it's, I'm, I'm over 20 years. And uh, yeah, that, that all contributed to, to today pretty much. To who you are as an artist for sure. Yep. And, and yep. that also reminds me before we move further is like, um tv played a huge role oh man bro uh, i mean T trl r oh, you yeah. know rap city all uh -huh. these different i still know rap city versus <laughs> bro oh my goodness it's like <laughs> and, and here's the cool thing about the influence of that i used to love hip-hop in particular on mm -hmm. on these uh top 10 music video vaults and all this stuff yeah but you would get exposed to other music because other hits from different genres would make it into the top 10. You oh, might yeah. catch a country song or a pop song mm -hmm. or, or an R and B song. It yeah. was, it was always a mix because if mm -hmm. something was hot enough, they had to put it on the, it was just the top videos. It wasn't necessarily, yep. you know, hip hop was dominating the space, right. but you know, they, they definitely had a lot of different music in there. So, you know, on Friday and Saturday and when you got home from school, you know, mm. running back the latest, you know, uh, TRL or, or Rap City Basement or Video Vault or, you know, if you were watching yeah, the box, if you were watching, the box, if you were watching TV past midnight, they would just run music videos oh, yeah. till like three, four in the morning. And oh, that's yeah. when you'd catch all your random stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, TV was absolutely huge because yep. it was all a visual experience. You got mm -hmm. to see people with like these crazy weird ideas oh, yeah. um, create uh, visuals for their music. So that was definitely huge. Um, I know when I got when I started making them. Well, let's let's rewind a little bit. So eventually, I moved. Uh, I moved a lot during my middle school years, mm -hmm. and. Um, and by the time I got into high school, and I actually uh, early eh, seventh eighth grade into high school is when I started messing with karaoke machines and tape recorders and vinyl players, and um, that's when I was I would say like just doing a speed run through the genres 
I know for me in high school, I started messing around with some other stuff. Like that was when I was getting really heavy into the underground hip hop scene, like real underground. We're not even going to go through names because I could literally sit here and roll off hundreds of underground artists. But if you went to the CD store, there were, you know, there was always a at least one gigantic CD store where you lived. So I know for me at first, remember Virgin Megastore at Mills? Mm-hmm. Yep. And yo, know, what was so night. ill about Virgin Mega Virgin Megastore, you could go in there and they'd have the top 20 CDs on the wall with the headphones and you could listen to the CD before you even bought it. Yeah. You know, so what a concept. You, what a concept. <laughs> you could listen to the music and be like, yeah, okay, I, I will buy the CD. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's worth it. And um, and then if you occasionally went to like, you know, I know I found this out way later, but on air, um, near ASU, they had some underground record stores where you could get both vinyl and just a more extensive version of all the genres. You know, it would be punk folk grass um worship cds underground mm-hmm. hip-hop r&b they just had a much wider selection but virgin megastore was definitely a cd store where it was like bro i don't know if you remember but virgin megastore was like half half a football field maybe even a football field long remember oh, like in the center of mills you walk in on one side of the mall you walk out on the other side of the mall facts like, I, like I remember two, going into virgin yeah. megastore i'm like this is like I feel like I'm in like a movie theater. Like they had the ambiance, they had Mm -hmm. like memorabilia and like posters and stuff. And then they just had like shelves and shelves and shelves. It was interesting though, because it wasn't like, it wasn't like crates. They, they set up the shelves to be like elegant. Like you felt like you were almost in like a fashion, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, like a, a, uh, a clothing store or something. The way that they had everything, categorized and the lighting in there and i remember that used to bro at once upon a time i used to take the bus to mills with no money and I, that mall that's a story in and of itself i used to go to oshman's hit up mm. the free basketball on that basketball court <laughs> uh I hit up the golf you hit range balls act like you're gonna buy a club i used to know some some girls that used to skate at the skate rink that worked at the the pizza place in the food court so I could get me a slice. We used to sneak into movies and we could go and watch Harkins movies all day because when we were done with one movie, we would just go to the other movie. You just go, 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 go. But um, we would, or we would sit in Virgin Megastore and uh, listen to music all day, Mm -hmm. all day long. And so that really shaped, that really had it. I mean, that's where I fell in love with with music. The more music I heard, the more I fell in love with it. Even if I didn't like it, I mm. love the discovery of just like picking an artist's brain and seeing what they could come up with. Mm-hmm. And um, by that time, I was drawing, so the arts definitely influenced me. But um, just like a quick snapshot, I I really listened to everything because of TV and radio top fifty mm-hmm. and places like Virgin Megastore and art you know my love for the arts um and just loving the elements of you know djing and graffiti and all that jazz i was just put on to so much music so that's like that's probably like the key identifier of a conscience record is that the next record is never the same as the last Mm. because you Um, have so much to pull from well, and I think a lot of artists are inspired by a lot of things, but they kind of, you know, for varying reasons, like will just stay in a certain space and mm-hmm. live there forever or for a quite a long season and then move on to something later. I know for me, though, I've just never really settled. Like I had my season where I was heavy into the hip hop, heavy into the rap and gangster, heavy mm-hmm. into the um, R&B heavy mm-hmm. into the dance and i'm just i i've as an artist i've always just said well what if i do this and um not because i'm trying to like achieve something but just out of pure love for the music it's like a mm-hmm. painter you know i'm the painter that looks at the the easel and says why haven't i used turtle green yet 
You know what I'm saying? Why haven't I why haven't I used the thin brush or the wide brush? And then I mess around with all of it and then I refine that over time and I don't care if the journey takes longer, but that's like the key thing about influence in my life is that I was inspired by a lot of different music, so much so that I don't hear music by genre anymore. Mm. I just hear music and I try to make music that speaks to me and I see the creative process as just a million tools. I have something that I want to express vocally and with words and with tone and cadence and I have a million tools at my disposal because of the influences to just be creative and express that are the vehicle for, for those words to connect and to be articulated. And uh, I don't care about what, you know, I don't, I don't care about uh, trying to achieve a particular sound as much as being authentic to myself mm. and authentic to the moment of being truly inspired by what makes me inspired. Um, I do work hard on just the craftsmanship so that I'm not going into situations with no skill. Mm. Um, but it, for me, at the heart of it is the exploration and the discovery. Um, but um, yeah, in a nutshell, I'm all over the place and I'm, I've learned to be okay with that. It's not the most marketable, but it's the most fulfilling. Um, for, for you, so talk about like, Talk about maybe some key genres that stuck out to you. Like there's seasons in my childhood of like, mm -hmm. I remember when I was hard rocking it. I remember mm -hmm. when I was jazzed out. What were like some key ones for you that just <laughs> jump started your musical journey? Yeah. So first one, like soon as you said that, uh, this is still previous pre musical journey, but, um, uh, Alia, are you that somebody? So mm. that record was like that was the first time I noticed production. Mm. Like that was the first time I said, "Oh, somebody's brain created this thing." And the reason why is because I don't know if you remember the beat, but it had the baby crying. Uh, uh. Yeah. That that song was so dark to me, bro. I remember yeah. when I used to. He, that was kind of like in the Eminem days, yeah. like when Eminem was on his Slim Shady stuff, and yeah. we used to hear that in the skate yeah. rink and not know what to do with it. Like we thought it yeah. was a, a cool tune, but it did, it yeah. killed the vibe of trying to be like happy, and it was just eerie. But it it had a yeah. draw to it for sure. And her yes. music videos were like super captivating as well. And now mm -hmm. you figure out like timbo beatboxing yeah, to man. make that record and like that yeah that was a and, and it was the same time because there was because there was are you that somebody there was if your girl only knew um there was a uh, uh pony like what is this beat where like dude is like that almost sounds like he's burping on the track bruh, tim was going <laughs> bruh, hey. bruh, bruh, you know and then and like all of the um Missy Elliott stuff like I think that was probably one of Nelly the first Furtado, time. Yeah, Justin. and see and see that was e that that was even still kind of later, but I mean like that early Timbo uh Alia, that was the first time I I realized like oh, people like the people produce. Like there's mm -hmm. a there's a creative thing cuz I think most I mean now that I think back there are there's production where clearly they were thinking outside the box, but I think if his was his production was so disruptive in my life that it like woke me up out of my like production stupor. The swing, the swing alone. Yeah. I remember, ooh, love to love to love you. Yeah, love yeah, that's what I'm saying. No, 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 no. Yeah, bro. Yeah. The stuff with Jay Z, like, that's oh what I'm saying. man, it was yeah. Oh yeah, like yeah, jiggle what, like that whole that can i get a like all that stuff was just that was so, a crazy time too because was, you had some hitters like you had yeah. you had tim you had pharrell you had mm -hmm. jd you had mm -hmm. um uh scott storch you had hit mm -hmm. makers like yep bro the production you had a, a rap music on the east coast mm -hmm. like you literally had fools just like dumping with creativity oh like, yeah you had dre you like yeah Bro, it was so disruptive. It was so disruptive because yeah. they, that was really the evolution of 
disco, the evolution mm-hmm. of funk, mm-hmm. the evolution of yeah. R&B, mm-hmm. the evolution the of of it. of dance, yeah. the evolution of like you know the the old rap um the old rap music like mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Diddy was like sampling. I mean, it was hit makers, but they were like sampling every. I don't. I'm, I don't know how many arguments I got into with my mom about songs that were sampled because she was like, "This is uh, Diana Ross." And it's like, no, this is a uh, Notorious B.I.G. What are you talking about? Yes, yes. <laughs> you know. Yeah, man, that was a whole. Yeah. Music was, was so disruptive back then because everybody was so, and, and not only that, but there was an audience for everything. Oh yeah. Like like think about now. You know, even though hip hop has so many subgenres and there's a lot of stuff played on the radio now, when you think about radio, it's kind of dead. Like, mm. yeah. like, like there's only certain stuff being played. Back then, you could have like the most disruptive song and there was an audience gravitating towards it because of the visual story or the backstory or just the music itself. And so Radio Top 50 would just be made up of all kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And like that was another great thing about the music is even though we were dealing with a smaller concentration, that concentration was super concentrated. Like oh, when yeah. I think of the diversity of the musical landscape of the late 80s, 90s and early 2000s, mm-hmm. going to a record store was like heaven. Oh, yeah. Like when you came home with a CD and and I'll tell you what, if Napster and LimeWire and BearShare, if that era never happened, our era would be boring yeah. because, because think about it, bro. You couldn't hear a CD. Mm-hmm. You, you, you would never have had a reason to go into the hip hop store and buy more hip hop than what was being played to you on radio. Mm-hmm. Think about that because you couldn't afford it. No. And you wouldn't even have like scrapped the money together to get it or asked for it on Christmas unless mm-hmm. you knew. So once the pirating era came, that was like our streaming era. Mm-hmm. Because now you are hearing the music for free, but you might not be getting whole albums, but you might be hearing certain artists you would have never thought you heard before. Like the pirating era plus the forum message board slash MySpace era Mm -hmm. was just enough circulation of influence for our era that I don't think we really missed out on what a lot of people have now with Spotify and algorithms and recommendations because between that alone, you would hear music, you had the ability to discover between radio, TV, and pirating and, and message boards, you could you could find new things, go to your local record store, and, and pick them up. Mm-hmm. And if you had to drive all the way on the other side of town to get to that one record store that had the bigger selection or go to Virgin Megastore all day, and, and, and album artwork was a huge influence on me as well. Like just, mm-hmm. oh my goodness, to go to a CD and look at the producers and look at the, the artwork. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was a whole vibe, dude. And yeah. to see the the thank yous and the sh- oh, uh, Dr. Dre, oh, he thanked his mom and his his, his pet dog, or you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like to see the the human personality. I remember DMX CDs. When I would get a DMX CD, I would lose my absolute mind. And and this was a different era, you know. For a lot of you Christian folk out there who 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 have already passed out because they're like. Oh my goodness, Johnny, no! I, I um, still got hit, so I'm like, uh, I'm like six years in right now. So <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, like for me, um, I grew up in the church, but not as a Christian. We mm. were we went to church. I don't know. You you'd have to ask my mom why we went to church um, early on. I just remember um, the church would help us a lot um, yes. when either something was financially rocky or something would happen or we would move. My mom always would plug into a church and we would get situated, you know, spiritually, sometimes financially. Uh, I remember the church helping us out when we moved to Phoenix, you know, it was uh, the the massive mega church out in Phoenix. We ain't going to throw out names, but like 
being in the church, what the Christian life looked like, um, that God was revealing to the, revealing that to me very slow. And though I truly believed the Holy Spirit was in me, and I did desire to please God and to live holy, um, I it, because I didn't really have a lot of like leadership, not, not parentally, like my mom was amazing, but like just solid, um, being in your word, biblical teaching and discipleship. I didn't really have that growing up. So it was like, um, no male figures really. And so like later on I got that, but it was, I was late to the party in a sense where it was like, I didn't realize like a lot of the music I was listening to was not healthy for me until I hit college. College was when I deleted everything and realized music was a huge idol in my life. And God hit the reset button in me where it was like, okay, step back from this, reevaluate your relationship with me. And then I, I went back into the music scene with fresh eyes being discerning of like what I was feeding myself with and navigating that space more carefully and not just letting anything come into my house. And, um, and and then like just having that discerning mind while listening to music before I was like collecting music, like art pieces. Like I didn't care if it was bad or good, throw it on my shelf. I'll listen to it later. I loved my music collection, the pirating days where you're just downloading heaps and heaps and heaps of music just for discovery. And uh, you didn't really see music as like a spiritual battle. Mm. Uh, I know at least for me, me it ran across my mind as like a thought, but not, uh, it it had no weight, like a weightiness to it. And so um, I did listen to everything under the sun. And um, the Lord gave me like fresh eyes on it a, a lot later in life. So that's why my influences are what they are. And um yeah, man, like there was just so much to choose from back then. Um, was there anything, you know, we're approaching a half hour here, so I want to mm. wrap up. I want to go yeah. into these different pockets on different episodes because it's clear that like there's so many cool like seasons to our musical journeys, I'm sure. But mm. like, can you just, so I kind of wanted to just dance around whatever came to our mind on this, but yeah. can you think of like, what were some of the non-musical things that like inspired different music that you would listen to as a fan or even stuff that influenced something uh, creatively in your craft. I know it's a lot of stuff, but like, were there any key significant moments where it was just like, yo, and then that made you go do something and then. Yeah. So um, like I mentioned earlier, I think the biggest non-musical influence per se would be, um the memorization in the in the early years um what do you mean memorization so specifically nursery rhymes um everything was a song uh and then also memorizing scripture memorizing the books of the bible that that kind of stuff even when like i write a new verse and say i have to do like a show or something Mm -hmm. um i feel like i'm tapping into the same faculties the the same discipline to learn a a song um that it's i i my earliest memory is times like those that are completely non-music related but just having the capacity to 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 memorize i think in terms of rap the first time like one thing that really um i would say inspired that is uh hearing um what's the record outcast rosa parks uh we were gonna pre- i was gonna perform it for a sixth grade um talent show mm-hmm. <laughs> and so like you said you talked about the art cover earlier they had the lyrics and they actually had the lyrics and so they had the li- li- what you know about the lyric books <laughs> yeah you know, they had the lyrics um in the equimini album and so yeah i memorized them i didn't actually didn't end up performing it but um, it definitely gave uh, a little taste of like what was to come. So, bro, you know sure. who is is you know who would give their life to to be on the Aquemini album? Who's that? Come on, you know this answer. Who loves Aquemini more than anybody on this planet? Well, I want to say, oh, AB, AB, yeah. 
That right. boy loves him some Equimini. Yes, he would get yeah. that tattooed across his chest. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like what? What else? So that shaped like your art making mm. process, I guess. Like, what were some non musical things that just like had music in it that you loved to, you know, yeah. things that you did or things you were involved in as a kid. Yeah, so I, you know, it's funny because you you have you mentioned this earlier today, like as we were preparing, and I found the question kind of or the topic kind of difficult, and the reason why is because I why well, I was really thinking about it, and it's really hard to separate music from things. So like music from, uh, say a show or t or a movie, at the same way that it's hard to separate a movie or something some type of visual from music it's almost like they come hand in hand so mm -hmm. yeah i think a plethora of things i mean another specific one would be like the water level of donkey kong and <laughs> like so like video just, games yeah video games um uh the theme songs for uh TGI Fridays, you know, um, what's Theme it called? Theme songs, bro. Man. T TV show intros. Yes, the intros. Family Matters, Step by Step. Uh, bro, the, the, the first 15 seconds of every yeah. show you knew every by show. heart, even if you didn't Dark, like the show. Darkwing Duck intro. Oh. Oh. <laughs> like uh, a Goofy movie. All the music in the Goofy movie. Like, Everything, you know what I'm saying? bro. Yeah, so it's it's stuff like that that has really really shaped um, my understanding of music and 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 my taste. So, as sure. a as a fan for me, bro, I think of a lot of things. I have to go through my life because, yeah. like, music just attaches itself to my life, and and those yeah. and those allow the memory to be cemented in my head even more because it's like the reference point. Oh, shoot, that, I hear a bell sound. I automatically think, you know, this. And so I know for me, video games were huge. Mm -hmm. I knew all the video game music. I yes. loved it, whether it was trash or cool. I loved it. I wanted all of it. I loved the 8-bit sound and all that mm -hmm. jazz. Um, so video games was a huge influence on me musically. Mm -hmm. Um skateboarding skateboarding mm. uh just the skating the skateboarding scene if you ever go to a skate park and you listen to the kind of music um you know or you go on tony hawk pro skater oh, and you're man. playing that like or playing 1080 or any of the snowboarding games you mm -hmm. know the music as soon as it comes on and mm -hmm. It makes you a fan of things like mm -hmm. I remember getting put onto like Red Hot Chili Peppers and like just stuff like that and being like, no, I'm actually a fan because this is a vibe if you know how to if you have it on in the right space mm -hmm. and like, bro. Uh, so skateboarding for sure, roller skating with the with the DJing and all that jazz because that was a whole vibe. Mm -hmm. um, TV. So we're talking sitcoms. I knew mm -hmm. all the music for all the sitcoms. I knew. Um, uh, uh, like uh, music video radio type stuff on TV was huge. Um, soundtracks to movies. Like I remember right. stuff like Braveheart and like just different key movies and like the intro music that would happen in those. And even like this is something that people don't even do anymore. What about movie soundtracks? Like I remember I, wa I watched um, so many like whether it was Disney movies or even just like funny comedies like – you know, rush hour two or something mm -hmm. back in the day. Yep. And you would go get the CD. Yep. You wanted to hear the CD. Um, you know, and that kind of ended, I feel like, after like 50 Cent dropped the Get Rich or Die Trying movie. That was like <laughs> the last CD everybody ha wanted to go listen to Window Shopper and all this stuff. But like, um, so that was that. Kung yep. Fu. Mm. Oh, don't play with me with some Kung Fu. Yeah. The Kung Fu, bro, I, I just loved martial arts films. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, The La uh, Drunken Master, uh, 36 Chambers. Oh, my goodness. Kung Fu shaped my whole existence. Yeah. And, you could, and you could find that on a lot of, like, late-night TV. And eventually when you got cable, when you finally got satellite TV, that was, like, a big thing when you got satellite TV and you could flick through the network and see the titles all oh, yeah. on one page. Um, 
I'm trying to think as well. The the vinyl player, vinyl, huge influence in my life. Mm. The vinyl player was so cool that you wanted to go get vinyl just mm. to play it. It didn't matter. Yeah. And vinyl was so like honestly, low key vinyl was like I mean, pe people sleep on the art of vinyl. Oh yeah. Vinyl brought so much to the table and it was almost better than CDs in a sense because the artwork was bigger. It was magnified. Mm -hmm. Um seeing a giant piece to this day, um if I had any of my favorite uh CDs, if I could see them in a vinyl cover, I'd hang them up like checkerboard in my office because like the the vinyl size is really the vibe. Like oh, yeah. you you want to see your album art that big. So vinyl yeah. played a huge um, role as well, sporting events, like the songs the teams would come out to, the songs that you'd play, mm -hmm. um, barbecue cookouts were a huge influence. You got to see what people like to listen to at the cookout. Barber oh, yeah. shops were a huge influence. Yeah. You go to yes, a barber the shop, they had a playlist, yeah. bro. They had a playlist and you go mm -hmm. to different barber shops. Um, yeah. You know, the the pirating era, like I said before, you'd find a lot of different stuff. Um, a note on the pirating era, I actually, at that time, I was downloading freestyles more than anything else. Like, Oh, man, the all, freestyles era, dude. Yeah. You could get freestyles from all the radio stations, from yeah. all the people who came up to certain yep. radio stations. Yep. That was a vibe. Like, yep. cell phones. Remember, you could you had to record. Ringtone. They yep. make memes Voice about mail. it now. You you could <laughs> record your ringtones and, and leave your voicemails. Like, there was so much media, bro, back then that was creative and fun. It was hard not to so i say all that to say like the experience of music and being a fan of all of the ways in which sound is presented was mm -hmm. like super influential and Absolutely. i think we forget just how much stuff had music in it and yeah. how many different special ways music was shown even in the church like seeing the differences between oh well this church only has a guitar and drums and two vocalists this church oh they got organs oh they got mm -hmm. you know violins oh this church i remember i went to a church one time in college they they were trying to pay homage to native americans so they they had sections of hymnal praise and worship where it was no no stuff just drums just yeah. one single drum player um and so the church was, was brought that that soul, that choir feel, that that mm -hmm. heritage. Um, yeah, man, there were just so, there was just so much to offer back then. Yeah. Um, and, and and I I feel like you know I feel like an old man, and I don't want to push it to the point of saying like they just don't do it like that anymore because <clears throat> I think what it comes down to now is over. <clears throat> oversaturation in this space you know so much music is being shoved down your throat and when it's all based on an algorithm that says if you listen to this show him 50 other things like that because we want him to eventually be a consumer <clears throat> or keep his subscription and so um you have to be diligent to find new things um yeah. in this kind of ad marketing space now but if you do um if you're intentional to to find new music and to explore and to check out stuff because it is searchable um then then you can get that same feel but i just feel like back then it was like new frontier for so many things like radio like sports like different activities like the cookout and it all changed you didn't go from one place to the other and hear the same stuff certain mm -hmm. environments had certain music and it was shown in in conventional and unconventional ways and it just made a real movie out of the influence to where nothing was ever really redundant mm -hmm. it, everything was new and and being revised and brought to the table and it, it was just like oh wow the rest of the world is doing all this different stuff and it was a fun time movies were a much bigger deal back then going mm -hmm. to a movie was a big deal yeah hearing <laughs> this the surround sound of the movie the yeah. and like just the bass and you're like oh this is a movie and <laughs> you know what i mean like yeah and now it's like i'll just watch it at my house yeah, you know, or the iPad. You don't have that sense. I feel like our time period was more sensory. 
Mm-hmm. Audio was presented in so much audio in spaces, like audio audio with context really mattered. Mm. Um, and it's harder to find like the total package with the music now where it's like they're they're showing it in just different outlets and it has different sensory experience in different moments. Um, it feels a bit watered down and oversaturated, but I will say there are still amazing gems of musicians out there who are trying to do something new and fresh and see music in a different way. And, um, and and it's, it's cool to see. It's just harder to find now. So you just got to really be diligent. Um, before I, before I wrap up though, Wayne, um, anything else that you thought of while you were while you're listening to me do my one hour rants on, on musical influence. <laughs> no, um, Hey Arnold, um, theme song, the, uh, Doug theme song. Rugrats. Like, yeah, it's movies. It, yeah, it's, it's all, it all plays a part. It's hard to say any particular thing because it all plays a part. There were pivotal moments. Like I said, are you that somebody? Um, college dropout. After that, eight mile. We definitely got to. We definitely got to talk. Do an episode on just albums. Oh like yeah. Top ten albums that you heard and were blown away by. Oh yeah. And uh, for sure, but keep going. Um, eight mile. That was pretty pivotal. I think everybody. <laughs> everybody wanted to become a rapper after they watched Eight Mile. <laughs> Bro, everybody. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no, I mean, that's, I, I think everything plays a role and it makes the artists who, who they are, you know? Yeah. So. It always made me appreciate music. Um, yeah. Music yeah. just got me through so many moments of my life and, um, and yeah, uh, oh, go ahead. This could be a whole additional episode, but honestly, I think also think, talking about our influences has created a standard for us of for level of skill for skill level because like i mean and and it i'm not saying this to like belittle the greats of this time of this day but i feel like the people who are really excelling right now in 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 rap they're like just not i don't want to i'm not i don't want to use belittling language but they they could have ran with the people in in those times you know like so the the bustas the you know wu-tangs the like all of the people that were running radio in in nine in the late 90s um i feel like the guys who are like running things right now they would have you know been able to to run with them and but they they probably may have just like fell into the crowd you know they they would have been one of many as opposed to like the the guys and i think the reason why is because they were also influenced by the same influences that we're talking about right now you know yeah no that's a fact that's a good point yeah. yeah um you know the the great thing about music is it's subjective in that um music serves people in different ways and one thing that i've learned about myself over the years with the music is like i have a huge appetite um for things that i look for that make great music but i also have like a high respect for simplification as well like i neither am looking for a lot or a little in music anymore Mm-hmm. I listen to the music for what it is and where I am when I hear it and it either forms a relationship with me or it doesn't. Yeah. You know, and, and going and going back with um going back to our older episode on like what makes a song great. Mm. You know, I started thinking through that a lot over the last couple of days and I think I've come to some really good concrete measurements that are both like ambiguous and concrete like they're open ended where it's like it's a concept more than it is a a rule. A, a rule, but it has to have it, you know, like yeah, um, like memorability. Like a song needs to be memorable to be a, a great song. Uh, can't be great if it's not memorable. Um, mm. 
impressionable, you know, things like that. Um, we'll, we'll definitely elaborate on that in a later episode, but yeah, I love the way music can speak to different people differently. And, um, and that's why music is also as much as it is corporate and like objective in certain ways, uh, you know, it's almost like the matrix where it's like everything that people says is top 50. Um, it's like, we're basing that off logical information, right? Like yeah. li listeners and numbers, but we also <clears throat> understand that there are systems in place that force us to listen to certain things. Mm -hmm. And had we had more options, maybe those options wouldn't have been in the top 50. So in another sense, it's kind of like there's a little bit of programming going on there. N not everything is great because it's great. It's just might there's a million reasons why a certain song might have stuck out to you you know what i mean if yes. you got in a car crash listening to reggae and now every time you hear reggae you think of the car crash you know that's mm -hmm. programming so it's like um music has uh, it's about connecting it's about expressing it's about a conversation and that conversation is happening at the spiritual level at the visual level the ear level um, in, at the cultural level, many different ways and how it speaks to you is different than how it speaks to me. And that's what makes it beautiful. And what makes it even more beautiful is when two or more people come together and share, this is what the music did for me. And then that inspires an appreciation on both sides for what music can do even beyond our own interests and our own expectations. And so that's why I wanted to talk about the influences because um, it just... It makes you fall back in love with music again, and we're so, yeah. God is so gracious to have given us music because mm. just off music alone, I could literally talk until I'm I'm gray. You know, yeah. it, I could literally just go on and on and on and on about the fruit that music has been in in my life. Um, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up. If you guys want us to get into a pocket and talk about anything on here a little bit more, let us know. Tell us maybe some influential albums or things non-musical that you grew up with that really shaped your love for music as a fan or as an artist. Um, I definitely know we're going to come back and, and revisit this in the future because uh, there were some key things that we talked about that I would love to make another episode out of. But yeah. uh, we appreciate you guys so much. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, guys, be blessed. Wayne, we out. We out.